what's going on friends as your program gets longer you may want to split it into several files for easier maintenance this is where modules and packages come in handy in this lesson i will be explaining what modules and packages entail in python without any delay let's dive in a module is a python file containing python definitions and statements when we say definitions we mean things like variables functions classes and so on for us to be able to use the content of this python file in another module we need to make use of the import keyword let's create a new module called main.py main.py this file is going to serve as the entry point of our application within this main.py module we want to be able to access the content of the product module and the helpers module the first and the simplest way to achieve this is to import the module itself by using the module name. We need to make use of the import keyword import the name of the module which is product products. When you do this, you are now able to access the content of the product.py file which is also a module. On the next line, let's say products. Dot. As you can see, the code editor is already showing us the content of the product module, max price and the product class. This is the max price and this is the product class. Let's go back to the main.py. Now we can decide to make use of the definitions in the product module. Let's print this to the terminal. Print max price. Let's execute the program to see what happens. Great, as you can see, the value of the max price from the product module is now printed to the terminal. Now let's pretend to access a variable we didn't declare in the product module, max units. If I were to run this program, you would see that Python will raise an error. Attribute error, module product has no attribute max units. All right, friends, the second way of importing is to import individual objects. In such case, we need to say from module name import specific object. Let's try that out from module name which is products import specific object such as max price products. With this approach you only import what you need. For instance if you are not using max price you can decide to omit it. Let's go ahead to create an instance of the product product1 equals product class we need to supply the name and the price the name is shirt and the price is 10 let's make use of max price imported now on the product instance we can call the get total price product one product one dot get total price we need to pass the quantity let's pass five let's print this to the terminal print all right now let's execute the program we have the total price printed to the terminal as you can see we are making use of the individual objects found in the product module max price and the product class this is how we can import each individual object from a module it is even possible to import everything at once by using the asterisk symbol that means we can say from product import asterisk. This is going to import everything found in the product module. Let's execute the program again to see what happens. As you can see, the program works as expected. Using asterisk to import all objects is not recommended in large scale code base because this could lead to conflicts. I'm going to declare the max price variable in the helpers function. Max underscore price equals let's say 100 let's go back to the main.py from helpers module import all that is import everything found in the helpers module now if you notice the max price variable can be found in the product module and the helpers module let's execute the program to see what happens this output shows that the max price value used is coming from the helpers function because it was the last module imported. Let's change the order of the import to see what happens. 
the output is now 50, which means the max price value is coming from the product module. Alright friends, an imported module or object can be accessed using alternative names. This is where the ask keyword becomes useful. We can opt to import an object such as max price and access it using a different name at the location where it is imported. Let's try that out. So we can decide to say from product, import product as generic product and max price as price. In this main module, we imported max price, but we want to access it with another name. That's why the code editor is showing that products and max price are no longer defined. Generic product and max price as price. Now let's execute the program again to see the output. Great, it works. A Python module, which is simply a .py file, can be used in two ways. It can either be imported for use by another module or executed as a standalone script. We've seen how it can be imported by using the import keyword. If you want to run it as a standalone script, then you need to mention Python followed by the name of the file or the name of the module. In this case, let's say python3 main.py. This command executes the contents of a Python file. If you open up the Python interpreter shell and you import the same module, you will see that text are printed to the terminal. Let's try that out. Let's open up the Python interpreter shell and import the main module python3 import main. As you can see, a text is printed to the terminal. This is because the import statement is actually executing everything found in this module. So when it gets to this line of code, this method is executed and the output is printed to the terminal. Most of the times you use the import statement, you actually want to use it to import object from a module, not to call or execute the object. To fix this, we need to be able to distinguish when a module is imported and when it is run as a script. Whenever a .py file is imported as a module, Python sets the special variable double underscore name double underscore to the name of the module. However, if a file is run as a standalone script, the variable is set to the string double underscore main double underscore. So we can decide to say if double underscore name equals equals double underscore main, we want to execute this line of code. If this special variable double underscore name double underscore is equal to double underscore main double underscore, then it means that the module is executed as a script, which means we can run any relevant code in this block. Now let's try that out again. Exit Python 3 main. Great, it works. Now let's import the module Python imports main. Great, as you can see, this part of the code is not executed because the module is now imported. A package is a collection of modules organized in a directory. Packages are particularly beneficial when structuring larger projects or libraries. Suppose you are developing a very large application that includes many modules. As the number of modules grows, it makes sense to organize them based on what they are doing. Let me show you a sample code base. As you can see, everything that has to do with user is put in a separate folder. The same goes for messaging and notifications. This approach of structuring the code base makes it easier to maintain. For instance, if we need to update some functionalities about users in the future, we know the directory to go. The fact that we have a directory which is the same as a folder and a couple of modules inside it does not automatically make it a package. For Python to identify a directory as a package or a sub package, the directory needs to contain a special file named double underscore init double underscore. So the init file tells Python that the directory containing it should be treated as a package or a sub package. The init file could be empty and most of the time it is, but it can also contain initialization code. First thing first, let's make this package directory an actual package by creating the init file inside it. Let's create a new file called 
double underscore init. We are just going to copy the content of this module folder, Ctrl C, then Ctrl V, paste. Now let's see how we can access the content of a package from an external file. Let's create an external file outside of the package touch external.py. Okay, so now we have a new external file outside of the package. To access the content of the package, first we need to mention the name of the package. The name of the package is package, so we're going to say from package dot we want to import from the AirPass module, import max price and get current price from package dot product import max price and product. Let's get rid of the max price from the product module. All right, so let's print max price and get current time get current time remember that external.py is a file outside of the package now let's execute this program to see what happens great this is how we can make use of the contents of a package from outside the package i mentioned earlier that the init file is needed to make a directory a package but as of python 3.3 a package can be created without the init file a package created without the init file is called a namespace package, while the one created using the init file is the regular package. I recommend you stick to using the regular version. What that means is that if we omit the init file, our program is still going to work. In as much, you are using Python 3.3 version and above. I have a link in the description explaining the difference between the two. While explaining modules, we've seen that using the asterisk will import all the content of a module. However, sometimes you only want certain declarations such as functions, variables to be imported. The all attribute is used to specify which names should be imported. Whenever we write from module, import all. Let's go to the product module to use the all attributes. So we are going to say double underscore all equals the list of the objects we intend to import max underscore price this means that only the max price will be imported whenever we use the asterisk symbol as you can see the code editor is saying product is not defined that is because product is not included let's go back to the product module now let's include the product class product let's save the file again now let's head over to the main.py file. Yeah, you can see that we can now access the product class. Let's run the program again. Great, it works. The all attributes can also be used in init files within a package or sub package to ensure that only specific modules are imported when using wildcard imports on packages. For instance, within this package, we only want the product module imported whenever the asterisk is used. Now let's define the all attribute in this file. Double underscore all equals a list of modules product. All right, now let's go back to the external file. In this external file, we are going to say from package imports all. Now we can make use of products from package import all. This means that only the module defined here would be imported, which is product. Print the product module dot max price. So now let's try to access the helpers module. Print helpers dot. As you can see, we are not able to access helpers because helpers is not included as part of what should be imported whenever the asterisk is used. For now, let's execute the program to see the progress. Great, as you can see, we are able to use products because we have included it as part of what should be imported whenever we use the asterisk. All right, friends, some modules come with Python by default, meaning that you don't need to perform any additional installations once you have Python installed. For instance, you don't need to install anything when working with modules like math, CSV, 
OS and so on. So you can easily say imports map imports CSV imports OS. These sets of modules are called built-in modules. However, if you need other packages or libraries developed by other developers, then you need to first use pip to install the package. For instance, you can say pip install fast API to install the fast API library or package. I have an article explaining how to publish your own Python package so that you and other developers can start using it by running pip install the name of the package. If you find value in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.